disclaimer. I don't usually curse in my videos, although in person I am a sailor. But in this video, because I'm speaking to you so candidly, and this is very much a vlog style slash confessional, there probably will be some cursing. So let me apologize in advance for all the delicate ears out there. There are going to be some F-bombs. So let's just start now with fuck. Fuck this, fuck that. Okay, there's the, I had to preface it with that. Hi friends, I really appreciate you clicking on this video. I'm sure you know from the title that this isn't my usual video where I do a time lapse of me painting or perhaps I show you a tutorial, a DIY, something creative. Today's video I thought maybe I would just talk a little bit more candidly. I'm a little nervous at the moment talking about something so personal, but I'm sure by the end of this video I'll be a little bit more relaxed. Um, let me start off by saying that um, I appreciate your patience with me as this is going to be probably a long video. For those of you that may be watching that know me personally know that I can talk quite a bit and for all of my amazing YouTube subscribers you may be used to my short videos, three minutes, I don't know, 15 minutes of a time lapse. This is not it. This is probably going to be quite a bit long. My amazing husband Brian just purchased me a lighting kit off of Amazon, one of like those starter kits that are like inexpensive but really good for beginners but I haven't had a chance to set it up yet because I have been I don't want to say ill not really injured but I have had an ailment <laughs> an affliction if you will um, that has had me down and out for like about a week which is why this video I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, health and art and how they relate to each other and sort of like do a little confessional about myself as a creative person and as a creative uh, professional. I knew this was going to be a tough video and I knew it was probably going to take a couple of takes for me to actually get these words out in a way that makes sense to a viewer. The topic that I'm going to talk about health and art and how they correlate together hits home because I'm still in the midst of my health journey and I relate myself so much to being a creative you know I create every day and when I don't have the ability to create and that's kind of how I see myself as a person as being a creator and when that's taken away from me, it's very difficult to figure out where I fall in the world and how I think about even myself because I'm so much the things that I create. I'm talking to you guys as friends, but I'm also kind of using this camera as a mirror to talk to myself because this is a video that I need to hear as much as I need to share. So I do plan on replaying this back if I have any more dark moments along this health journey. So what is this health journey that I am going through and how in the world does it relate to uh, art? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I am a firm believer that art is healing. And when I say art, I don't mean pen and paper or paint and canvas. I just mean the artful way of living. Um, it could be any creative practice. It could be cooking or makeup artistry or dancing. For me, it's painting um, and videos and teaching. That is my art. But there's so many arts out there. So that's what I mean by art. And my healing journey, that is something that I have been struggling with um, very strongly the last couple of months. And then very recently, this last week has been like a hell week. So a couple of months ago, February, I believe, to be exact, my husband and I decided that at the end of the year we would start trying to have a baby. I was ready for a family and it took quite a bit of um, wearing me down <laughs> from my husband over the years. We've been together uh, for quite some time. We were high school sweethearts and it's been a while um, that he's wanted to be a dad but it took me a little bit longer to be ready emotionally and spiritually and even physically to have a baby. 
So in February, I decided to get off of my birth control and not try to have a family, but allow my body to just kind of go back to its natural state off of, you know, fake hormones and chemicals telling me when, you know, to have my normal cycle. And I thought I would give myself a few months from being birth control to getting pregnant. I thought, let me allow my body to be in a natural state versus, you know, hyper controlled on birth control and uber crazy prego lady, right? I wanted that little bit of gap to be natural, which I thought would happen after getting off of birth control. Well, that has not been the case for me. Uh, once I was off of birth control, I did not start my menstrual cycle. Another preface it, probably should have said this at the beginning, this is totally going to be a TMI video. Uh, so if you hear menstrual cycle, any of those things freak you out, you might not want to watch this video. But if you're comfortable talking about um, such womanly things, then feel free to keep watching. Once I stopped taking the birth control, I stopped having my menstrual cycles. So I read up on it a little bit and I tried to figure out, you know, what could be possibly happening. And from the literature that I read, I saw that it could take women a couple of months to get back to their natural, their natural cycle. Like their body has to kind of get back into its own groove. So I did give it a couple of months, but come June, I still hadn't had my, um, my menstrual cycle. So I decided probably a good idea to go to a doctor. I have never been a huge fan of doctors. Um, I appreciate them. I love that they dedicate their life to healing. I think that it's a calling that is very admirable. But for me personally, I've always been one of those people that's very anxious in a hospital and anxious at a doctor's office. Uh, growing up, we didn't, we weren't the type of kids that went to physicals or annual exams. We went when something was majorly wrong and a butterfly bandage and some Windex wasn't going to cut it. <laughs> okay, so a uh, little bit exaggerated, but truly we only went to the doctors when absolutely necessary. So anything that had to do with doctors has always frightened me. I'm not a fan of needles and injections and all of those common fears, right? So going to the doctor was a big step for me. And uh, my gynecologist was like, well, there could be lots of things wrong with you. Let's start whittling them down. And um, after lots of tests and blood work from the vampire lady, as I like to call the lab technician, which um, bless her heart, um, I'm such a handful when people have to take my blood, but she was such a good vampire. She tolerated me very well. But after all of these tests and um, hormones to like jumpstart my period, nothing was working. So finally, the gynecologist was like, yeah, you need to see an endocrinologist. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So I go to this endocrinologist and I'm thinking to myself, man, I've never seen so many doctors in my life, right? I mean, um, I've had a gynecologist my whole life, you know, um, nothing too crazy fear about doctors. I have, you know, been to a gynecologist once a year and all of that good girly stuff, right? But I certainly never seen my primary unless there was something wrong and I had never even heard of an endocrinologist. So I go to the endocrinologist and um, they get me an MRI, which I had never had. My old dog is hacking, hold on. I could do a whole nother video where I could share my dog's health issues, but we won't do that in this video. <laughs> uh, but if you hear him hacking, no concern, he's okay. Um, so I go to take this MRI, which I was totally frightened about. I didn't know what an MRI was. I wanted to stay away from like WebMD or YouTube about anything having to do with MRIs. Although I, you know, knowledge is certainly power. I didn't want to um, scare myself away from the MRI, especially when I found out that I had to have a, um, uh, not a comparison, contrast, right? The contrast I put into my veins so that they could see the difference of my brain with the contrast ink and without. I was terrified of that. So I, I made it through and it turns out that I have a tumor on my pituitary gland or near it. And I thought to myself, okay, as soon as you hear tumor, I'm thinking like life threatening, I'm just going to fall over and die. Um, especially because I had never had such a major health concern before. So it was very, 
jarring to hear the word tumor and you automatically think cancer um, but it turns out that these particular tumors are uh, very common common right and uh, near your pituitary gland which is somewhere here <laughs> somewhere in your head and um, that they are not usually uh, cancerous they're like 99% benign. Totally just made that ratio, that percentage up, I mean, um, but they're just really commonly benign tumors. Now I was thinking, okay, fantastic, right? It's not fucking cancer, but who gives a fuck? It's still a tumor. What the hell? Like, what does that mean, right? I'm thinking a tumor equals bad. So I'm freaking out a little bit. I have to say that the doctor wasn't as, um, conducive to listening as I wanted her to be. Um, she didn't want to answer my questions. Anything that I brought up from my own personal research, um, she either kind of scoffed off like, oh, you know, I'm the doctor, don't do your own research. And um, I'm not very good on medications and other Western type medical things. So although I'm not silly, I will <laughs> take my medications and I'll take all of the Western surgeries and everything that this amazing Western medical industry has to offer. I also wanted to talk about natural remedies and how I could, you know, why did I get this tumor? How do I keep from getting other tumors? Like what natural remedies can we put in combination with any medications or surgical procedures? And she just laughed at everything I said that was natural as if I was some crazy hippie. And, um, it certainly affected me emotionally. I just, I thought, you know, we're not on the same page. I need to find another doctor. So just to recap my health journey, I got off of birth control. I didn't start my period. That led me to lots of tests that finally led me to an MRI that led me to holy shit, I have a tumor near my pituitary in my head. Um, I'm okay. As far as I know, nothing is life threatening. Um, it's very teeny tiny. It's not doing any insane damage to me. It's certainly not, not life threatening, uh, but it is something that I need to take care of. And currently I'm working with coming to grips with, this is going to be um, an ailment, if you will, you know, an affliction. I don't, I don't know what word to say, but this is going to be something that I have to deal with for the rest of my life. So working with this doctor, I was given a medication and this medication was supposed to keep the tumor from excreting the hormone, the hormone, by the way, that is keeping me from having my menstrual cycle, i.e. being able to have a baby, right? So this silly tumor of mine is creating its own damn hormones and that hormone is keeping me from menstruating. So the medication that I was given was to shrink the tumor. I say this because that's not what the medication says on the bottle, but you know, we trust our doctors. It's supposed to shrink the tumor and um, keep it from, or keep my hormone level, which is prolactin, fun fact, um, from being elevated because it's elevated. Because I think that's what my tumor is excreting. How gross is that word, by the way, excreting? I swear, once I found out that I had a tumor, I was like, I could feel it. I could, I think it's here. Like, I could totally feel my tumor, but I know it's all in my head. I can't feel my tumor. But it's excreting this crazy hormone uh, that happens to be prolactin, and the prolactin is keeping me from menstruating. So I take this medication, and um, it causes, it caused for me, not that it causes, it caused for me the most ridiculously painful, jaw-dropping, breathtaking, fall-to-your-knees pain that I had ever felt in my entire life. I took the pill um, on, I don't know, a Thursday or Friday, and, that, and I took it in the evening. You're only supposed to take this pill twice a week, so this is my very first dose. And I take it, and I get this little sharp pain, like a headache, right? Um, and I don't think anything of it. Okay. Maybe, I don't know, something happens. But the next day, these headaches come out of nowhere. Now for me, a headache has always been like an all over throbbing 
right? That's what I always thought was a headache. I've never had a migraine before, so I can't say what the poor souls that deal with migraines have to go through. I could only imagine after my experience this last week, but I know that with migraines, there's light sensitivity and noise sensitivity and sort of all of your senses are heightened and kind of irritates you. So I'm thinking like, is this a migraine? But it was so different. The pains that happened after the medication was only on my right side. And it was, it was like someone was taking an ice pick and like slamming it into my temple. And the pain was my upper mouth, like my upper teeth my temple and my right eye and it was excruciating and i've had a sciatica attack in the past which i thought was like the worst pain ever and if anyone out there has ever had like sciatic sciatica issues right take your sciatica and put it in your head <laughs> and that's what the attack was but worse so i'm doing my research and i'm thinking this really resembles a cluster headache which up until then, I didn't even know it existed until it knocked my ass to the ground, humbled me, and I now know what a cluster headache is. In fact, they're called suicide headaches because they're so excruciating. And I totally know why they're called suicide headaches because in the midst of the pain that was happening for a couple of days straight and, you know, getting closer and closer together, like contractions, right, for someone who's given birth. I've never given birth before, but I can imagine, you know, the fear that happens like in between contractions um, where there's only like a little bit of rest and then more pain and a little bit of rest and then more pain and they start getting closer together. That's what I was experiencing with these headaches. Long story short is I thought I was like dying. It was like the worst pain. And so, of course, you know, I'm trying to contact my doctor because the only thing that has changed has been this medication, right? Nothing else has changed. Um, there, was, there was no other reason why I would be having these cluster headaches that I had never experienced before. I was contacting the endocrinologist about the headaches and on my way to the primary, I was contacted finally by my, endocrino my endocrinologist um, who had me over and I explained everything to her and how it was extremely painful. I was actually having an attack during the visit and she had me go in for another MRI. So this is like now my second MRI in a week, right? Just crazy. I prayed to God um, that I didn't have an attack while in the MRI machine because for those familiar with an MRI machine, um, you have to stay still and there was no way, no humanly way I was going to be able to stay still if I had an attack. But um, God willing, I got through my attack everything aligned in the universe and, and I was okay during the MRI and they wanted to give me an MRI because they wanted to make sure that I wasn't bleeding in my head or that nothing was going wrong with my tumor um, and it turns out I was fine thank God the pain wasn't going away and her solution was well I don't think it's the medication because it would be very rare for you to have headaches on this medication even though headaches are a side effect of this medication it's very rare for people to get headaches. And I'm thinking, holy shit, I don't give a fuck if it's one in a million. I am one in a million. I am having headaches. Fuck this medication. This is the devil. Like, <laughs> I cannot take this pill, like, anymore. Um, so I stopped. I didn't take that second dosage, which was a few days later or that Friday. Because, again, you have to take it uh, twice in a row. So why does... Why did I want to share this? One, I needed to vent. So thank you for letting me vent. And uh, two, to say you really have to know yourself. The doctor's best advice was, okay, well, if you're getting headaches, um, let's let the medication get out of your system. And as soon as it's out of your system in a few days, you know, skip that Friday dosage that, you know, you're supposed to take, which would have been my second dose. Um, she was like, let's, let's cut it in half. And I'm thinking, no, even half of the pain would kill me. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. There has to be another medication, another way. So I've decided not to take that medication to reduce my prolactin levels and get back to being hormonally balanced. I am starting scratch. I've got some new doctors to interview, and this time I'm actually going to interview them and not just, you know, 
pick them at random, but really find doctors that um, are going to work with me, that are going to listen to not just my symptoms, but my lifestyle and take into consideration me as a whole, which it turns out is an actual way of doing medicine called integrative medicine. And I'm currently learning about that. I'm currently learning um, some great information from the latest book that I'm reading called The Hormone Cure, which I'm only a couple of pages in because like I said, I just got over these, these attacks, these cluster headaches, and I wasn't even able to read without getting pain in my eye. But um, between my amazing family, my husband and my mother, who took care of me so diligently this last week, and activated charcoal that my husband had purchased for me um, a few months ago from um, the Bulletproof website. I will totally link that below. That activated charcoal totally saved my life because it got that medication out of my body more quickly um, because it kind of flushes your system a little bit. But between that and my family, I was able to get through this very painful time. So in times past when I would have something, I don't want to say something like this, but if I had a cold or a flu or if I was injured or something were wrong with me, I would always turn to art as a way to express my feelings and zone out, like just very much go deep and do some work, right? But with this pain, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get comfortable enough to make a painting the pain seemed to um, increase if I were bent over, so any form of writing or drawing or something that would have me looking down um, was just too painful. Um, I'm so much a visual person that during this time, I uh, took to pen and paper and started to write out all of my ailments, sort of like my health history, because, you know, seeing all of these doctors all of a sudden, I've been asked so many questions about my past health and, you know, I was forgetting things and I was forgetting to mention things and I couldn't really remember. So I actually started to draw like a timeline of like all of my health issues that I've like had in the past and like my experience of what the pain was for me these last couple of days. But even creating this, you know, I did get an attack while creating this and so I had to stop drawing or else this would totally have stickers and glitter and you know everything else that I would totally do uh, to one of my art pieces. But um, I wanted to share like, you know, for those of you out there that love art and perhaps have some sort of physical ailment happening that's keeping you from doing what you love. And it doesn't even have to be art. I mean, I could imagine that someone that's athletic and getting some sort of sports injury and not being able to do what they love, say soccer, because they have a knee injury. I would imagine that it's heart wrenching because for me, this last week has been so incredibly heart wrenching being so out of sorts and then so much pain that I couldn't do what I loved not being able to do what I love to hurt way more than the physical pain of taking that silly medication, right? Um, for me, I consider myself a creative. And what that means to me is it's not just my business. It's not just my hobby. It's really who I am. I consider myself a creator. And I do that in lots of different ways. I put on makeup, right? Just to take my blank face and alter it so that at the end it looks different. Um, I do that with cooking. I start with raw ingredients and all of a sudden they're altered into a dish. I do that with painting. I start with the blank canvas and it comes out to a finished piece. All of these, all of these creations are something that I do on, on a daily basis. And for all of those things to be stripped away at one time and not to be able to do any of them was very difficult for me. And I would imagine that it's very difficult for a lot of you out there that may be dealing with some sort of health issue mentally, perhaps even um, for those that may be suffering with depression or anxiety or any of those things that keep you from doing what you love or anything physical. Like I mentioned, the pain that was happening because of my headaches this last week or or someone athletic getting you know injured physically and that keeping you from doing what you love. I, I feel you and I see you 
and I just want to let you know that you have to be easy on yourself and I think this is where I'm going to treat this camera like a mirror you really have to be compassionate with yourself you can't get impatient because I found myself getting impatient with myself this week I found myself saying like damn it you should be better by now what the hell right or um you know or don't get depressed to draw something but I physically couldn't draw something and I had to be patient with myself and I had to be compassionate with myself and and it sounds so counterproductive to to start a video saying you know art heals and just by creating art you heal a piece of yourself whether emotionally or mentally you you start to heal um, but what happens if you can't do that art right I mean if art heals and you can't do art, then what is there to heal you? And I say to you that there are always ways of thinking artfully, of being compassionate and bringing that creativity and art to your mind, that you're always going to be able to use art as a healer. Uh, for me, because I couldn't physically create art, I started to just use my imagination and think about upcoming projects I wanted to do. Use gratitude, which I find is a very artful way of living, to use gratitude. I do keep a gratitude journal. I have a video on that if you want to see it. But um, I found myself, you know, writing in my gratitude journal, although I wrote in my gratitude journal like this <laughs> because I couldn't look down. Um, but there's always artful ways of living your life even if it is in pain and there's always a way of introducing art into your life even if you can't physically accomplish what you're trying to accomplish i.e. for me a painting or sitting at a computer for hours on and editing a video really I just I want to thank you guys for allowing me to talk so candidly with you and to pretty much vent a very personal story you know this health journey for me isn't over it's just beginning I plan on, you know, doing what I preach and living my life as artfully as humanly possible and doing it every day as a practice. And I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to keep creating content and videos and web posts and blogs and pictures on Instagram and Pinterest and, you know, I'm going to keep, keep teaching art and keep making paintings. You know, this is something that I'm going to do for myself to to heal myself. Being able to do something so positive does affect you, you know, both physically and emotionally. Doing something that you love every day is going to reduce stress, which is just in turn going to make you a healthier person because when you're all stressed out, your immune system goes down and everything can get haywire. And again, I'm totally preaching to myself right now because I have the ability to dwell and kind of wallow in, in pain and suffering, whether it's mine or someone else's, because I'm very much an empath. And so I have to remind myself that I can't sit in that pain. I can't sit in that frustration. I have to pull myself out of it and um, be grateful for all of the amazing things that I have and, and keep doing what I love so that I'm not stressed out because stress is just going to give me more pain and more ailments. So... Thank you guys. I don't know what else to say except thank you. This video is probably terribly long, TMI and cursing, um, but I appreciate you letting me vent and sharing my health journey with you. I think because this video is so personal, um, although I'm sharing it out to the world, um, like I do all my other videos, unlike my other videos, I believe I'm going to keep the comments um, private or not private. What? where I get to approve them first because I don't like to spread, you know, usually I'll, I'll totally leave all my comments open and I'll only take a comment down if it's like overtly rude. And that's only because I have a very strong feeling about keeping, um, my piece of the internet very positive. So, um, for this one, I'm thinking that I may moderate in such a way, um, that I at least look at the posts or the comments before they're put out there into the world because again this is very much personal and very much raw you know for me because I'm still going through it but um, you know I struggled with what channel to put this on 
This is very much a vlog, so this should be on my um, Cali Girl in the South. But this is also very much simply art because I am a person behind my business. I am a person behind these YouTube videos. And when YouTube videos are put up um, as often as I want them to be, or my website isn't updated as often as I would like it to be, you know, I have to, I have to kind of be easy on myself. And I wanted to post this video on my business channel because I wanted to show you guys that, you know, there is a person behind this business. So I apologize if you subscribe to both of my channels, both Lisette Designs, which is Simply Art, and um, A Cali Girl in the South, because you're going to get this video twice in your feed. Thank you so much for subscribing to both of my videos. I will try not to do this very often where like I overlap and put the same video in both channels. But I think, I think this video is so important to me that I am going to share it in both channels. I haven't decided yet. We'll see where it ends up. But I'm thinking for the moment it's going to be on both channels and for sure simply art because again um, this is a this is a complete behind the scenes video of you know what it takes to have your your own business and some of the trials and tribulations that you go through one of which is having ailments that keep you from not meeting your own deadlines because even though you're your own boss you still have deadlines and um, I'm a tough boss <laughs> I don't like people missing deadlines and I'm the only person so I can't miss deadlines but I'm going to be easy on myself these next couple of weeks there's some really good stuff coming up on Simply Art though um, I've got a video that I was literally editing before I decided to grab the camera and film this one and it's um, a DIY video on how to create succulent desk planters which is really awesome I'm editing that one and I have another video for Simply Art, which is um, a behind the scenes look at how I organize my work folders. And then for a Cali girl, I do have a trip planned. Excuse me, I have a trip planned for um, the end of this month called, you know, I don't know what the name of the retreat is, but I have a yoga and art retreat that I'm attending. And I plan on doing a little bit of vlogging on that. And I have a website where I send out all kinds of positive goodness, uh, less cursing, <laughs> via email. Uh, and you can always subscribe to my VIP email where I send out all kinds of creative goodness. And I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to leave a comment. I would love to know how you guys handle any health issues that you have as far as staying out of sadness um, and frustration and how you're patient with yourself. I'd love to hear that. Or I'd also love to hear your stories about how art is healing or has healed you. So if you wouldn't mind, leave me a comment, hit like on this video, feel free and share it with anyone that you think might find some sort of interest in my long tangent. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.